YouTube, real quick, man, I want to announce a couple things before we get started with this tutorial. Two things. I'm going to be in California this weekend with my brother Get Beamed and 360 Jeezy. We have an event. Check it out. This is the event. This is the information. If you're going to come out, please do come out, man. Can't wait to see everybody out there. And that same week, the following day, I believe, I'll be doing a class that's open to the public. You just got to hit up Urban Barber College for this class as well. This one I'll be cutting, the other one I'll be talking business, but Beam and Jeezy, I think I, I believe are cutting, and we're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be showcasing. This is gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good weekend in California. Forgot to mention, Get Beam will be with me at Urban Barber College. So it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a great weekend. Cali, we coming. What's good, YouTube? Back with another one, with another tutorial. This one's a high taper into dreads. So this particular client, this customer, dope people, he's a barber, um, he knows of headlines, he's actually in Tampa, and he knows a couple barbers that work at, at headlines, um, but real cool people, he said he likes my high tapers, he watches the channel, and he wanted, he wanted a high taper, so we're doing a high taper into the dreads, I'm doing a number two to try to keep it dark, to really, to, to give myself the, the opportunity to create the best gradients that I possibly can. Now, I'm going with the grain first back here and then against the grain to pr to protect the dreads from getting cut. Cause his hair, man, if you cut his hit his dreads at the root, there is no putting it back. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can get away with cutting a little bit of a dread, you know what I'm saying? And and they'll still be able to lock it up. <laughs> but with his texture of hair, if you cut those dreads anywhere near the root it's over so we really are using our thumbs doing everything that we can taking our time paying attention making sure that we're we're not cutting anything we we're not supposed to be cutting so we made sure we we lowered it around the ear as well so that when we put that line on them it's really crispy now we'll start to put in our first guideline with the trimmers followed by the shaver Shout, shout out to my cousin. This got like the mob deep vibes with the beat. All right, so next step is blade open. Now it's a one open. So we started off with a number two. So this one and a half guard should really take out that line that we created with the number one guard open. And as always, guys, you can follow along on the bottom left corner with the color guide. So we're back to our number one open and then we'll close it and what we're really gonna what we're really doing is we're trying to create a blend until that guideline we created with the blade open disappears and what I notice here is that that guideline starts to disappear with that number one guard closed so I'm gonna skip the half guard go straight to blade open and try to go ahead and blend that line out And the clipper I'm using is the Babyliss Custom FX. Wait till you guys see the new joints I got. I got some new custom FX's. They fire. Can't wait to show them. Next video, I'll show them to you guys. I think. Alright, so now that we've done that with the blade open, we can go ahead and start to take out this bottom line with the clipper all the way closed. Now, if you're having a hard time taking out that bottom line, just grab the trimmers and use the corners. Go up about a quarter of an inch to take out that line. All right, so at this point, my blend, my rough draft is pretty much done. We'll go ahead and start to line them up and then detail that taper after. So I'm cleaning his skin, I'm getting rid of, it, rid of any dead skin because the color is supposed to dye skin, it's supposed to stain the skin to add some density to the hairline. So you don't want to apply the color on skin that's going to come off because then the color is going to come off. So we, make, we made sure that our canvas was nice and clean, we got a nice fresh layer of skin and um, 
will start to blend into the color to really make it look natural and flow into the taper. At this point, since I'm detailing, I went, ahead, I went ahead and started using the half guard. But I did save some time essentially um, during the rough draft by skipping the half guard. But yeah, the tape is starting to come out. It's starting to look pretty blurry to me. Stick around to the end, guys, because when we start lining up his hairline, you can see it's a, it looks like it's tricky, and I want to walk you guys through it. Let's go ahead and start the tape out the back. Now, his neck tattoos made it a little bit hard to see what I was doing, but I just trusted my system, and uh, I think the taper came out decent. All right, so we're using the one and a half guard. Pretty much, you know what? I'm not even gonna explain it. This is I'm using the same steps that I did on the first side, on the side taper there. Using the same steps. So one and a half guard will blend out that number two to that one open. Now I got my one closed. I'm gonna skip the half guard. I'll let you guys follow along. All right, so one of the things I should have done, I should have lined lined up the taper first before I jumped to the half guard and started spreading the blend out a little bit. That way I could see the taper a little bit better. But nonetheless, that's we're, we're, we were in our detail phase, knocking out the bottom line with the trimmer. Although I didn't really see a line, um, I trusted the system. And this is one of my favorite parts when it comes to a haircut. That neck line really just makes that taper just pop in my opinion guys look how that taper is coming together especially after putting the line on it man So you, one of, you guys notice that I walk that trimmer all the way to the corner, to the corner because I, I don't want any C cup. I want to make sure it's nice and bald. To me, that's what makes a high taper stand out so much more. If you can get any type of shadow at the bottom, any type of hair stubble at the bottom, especially around the peak of the C cup, which is the highest point of the C cup, which is like, you know, where the sideburn to... I don't even know. I, I would need like a, a laser pointer for you guys to show you exactly where it's at. But hopefully um, saying the, the peak of the C cup kind of defines what I'm talking about. Um, but getting that hair stubble, any little shadowness out and getting it really, really tight makes that taper stand out. Now, this side was a little bit more difficult because you can see how the hair just kind of it grows to a, a slant. And I'm, I got to turn my clipper to this angle. Um, in order to get get that blend to go in and, and what happens is all this hair is growing in the same direction towards the back of the ear or towards the connection of the ear and it's making it almost like bunch bunch up so it looks really dark behind the ear so if you notice I'm going in with my corners and really trying to lighten it up behind the ear because if I don't 
then it's gonna look like a big dark spot behind his ear and the high taper is just gonna look it's gonna look weird Keeping it natural, keeping it natural. Now, lining it up back here was hard because of his neck tattoo, so the line's just not gonna stand out. The, the, the lineup is not gonna be as sharp as the other side, and not much you could do about it. But what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I can get it to stand out as much as possible so that it doesn't look uneven with the other side. And even like the, the gradients, the actual blend looks a little bit weird, but again, there's not, mu not much you can do because the tattoo is making it look darker. Alright, we're using the Sean Cuts hair template with the Beam Team XL with the no drip that's available at 245.com. You can get the Sean Cuts hair template at Sean Cuts Hair. And now, once again, once I added the color, I'm going back in and I'm detailing it. Try and get this blend as blurry, as gradient as possible. Oh, and I wanted to make oh, uh, and I wanted to make another announcement. Now that I'm touching up everything with the razor, of course the razor makes the lineup pop even more. But um, we have an event in Spain. David Fala will be out there representing Tune45.com. If y'all know who David Fala is, check out his YouTube channel. Um, he's well known. You know, I feel like on YouTube. But if you don't know who he is, check out his channel, David Fala. Um, but we'll have a we'll we'll be out there representing Tomb 45 in Spain. So that's super exciting that we're expanding overseas, man. We're now being carried in in the UK, in Greece, and in Spain. All right, so we're gonna enhance the back taper here and and behind the ear, man. It's just making it pop so much more. It it was already popping, guys. It was already great. I feel like it was already looking good, but that color just makes it stand out even more. And one of the things I've been doing lately, guys, is de detailing with either my seniors or detailing with my masters. And I've mentioned this before, but I've been enjoying detailing with a different clipper. Okay, so real quick, guys. So I'm going with the grain here um, because he has cowlicks in the front. You can't really see him because his dreads, because he has dreads. But what's happening is hair from his calyx in the front hairline that want to grow up are they're there with his dreads and then hair that wants to go down it's almost like a little island in the middle of his hairline i'm not gonna push his hairline back i'm gonna use the corners that i already lined up and just kind of bridge them together in the middle whether i see hair or not i'm going to imagine that there is and go straight across and what you'll find is you'll get a subtle line you know what I'm saying? He does have some scalp exposure because of his um, cowlick and the dreads pulling hair, you know, separating it. But I think that's the best way to attack his hairline, not pushing it back. All right, let's get this uh, goatee going. For me, one of the most important parts with goatees is just making sure that each one of his bars that are connecting his chin hair to his mustache um, that each one of those are kind of parallel with one another. You don't want one slanting more than the other, and you don't want one being skinnier than the other. Now I get it, some people, they don't have the same, um, like, you know, one side might have more hair than the other, but you gotta do your best to try to balance it so it doesn't look off. Um, and then, you know, with the mustache on the top, I don't really do too much with the trimmer. As far as shape, I do that with the razor, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I cleared some bulk above the mustache, but 
the shape and the sharpness I'm gonna I'm gonna create using my razor handle now and I do this with every hair texture every hair texture I'll use the razor um, for the mustache typically if they have you know cur the curlier the hair the less bulk shaving I'm doing with the razor so I might just do the outline like like you see here with the razor and the rest of it with the trimmer and the shaver just to be cautious that I don't irritate my clients skin and make them bump up so this is the cut guys you guys can see the taper came together to me it looks it looks good we got his goatee in there we shaved his face um finished it off with some aftershave all that good stuff and the neck taper for what it's worth man with the tattoo on one side i think it looks pretty balanced it looks pretty blurry and uh, i think the cut just came together nice man if you're new to the channel please do subscribe smash the like button and comment below what you thought about the cut man Yo, YouTube, YouTube, hold on. Let's answer some questions, man. There's something I might be doing on these videos just to make this more interactive with you guys and be able to give you guys some extra bonus nuggets. What I'm gonna start doing is going to my last video and answering some of these questions since it's really, really hard to answer everybody. Basio, don't stop dropping videos every day. Keep them coming. I've been trying. I've been trying to get more models and more models so I can record content. It's been really hard, but I have been traveling, guys. So just this past week, I was in Atlanta. I was in New York City, and I've been tra traveling like crazy. I had guests down from Dallas, but I'm going to do my best to keep rolling with the content. I don't care if it's product, um, product reviews. I don't care if it's vlogs or if it's YouTube tutorials. We're going to keep pumping. It's road to 500K, guys. What's the difference between Toon 45 Online Academy and the new Toon 45 Foundations online course? So I was inspired to do the Foundations course because it's Foundations. I, I was inspired because there was an issue going on where we were all like the barber industry as a whole were debating the whole um, relationship between barbers and barber schools. And a lot of people were complaining about barber schools and feeling like they're not getting enough information there. So I wanted to create some type of curriculum that would help someone have a strong foundation for their barbering career. It covers um, sheer work, it covers the whys, the hows, it covers clipper work and fading, and also covers financing and making finances and making this a career. The online academy is kind of like the continued education for barbers. It's recurring. It's a monthly subscription. And um, we do your haircuts, my feedback. But I also do longer 30 minutes or longer um, tutorials. Um, a lot of them are like the YouTube tutorials, except way deeper, way more um, in depth, I feel like. Now, this ain't a question, but I wanted to show you guys. He said, this year I decided to leave my 9 to 5 and pursue my dream of barbering. Appreciate the vision, boss, yo. Did the same about two months ago, scary as hell, but I don't regret it for a bit. Best of luck, my man. Another person said, same for me, left my career of highway construction and decided to make the plunge into barbering. Best of luck to you. How dope is that? Like you got one guy who commented, you know, he's making his, his jump. You got another guy following up, wishing him the best of luck and also giving him more confidence saying, I, I went through it too, bro. And I don't regret it for a second. And another guy follows up and he says, man, best of luck. I'm going to do the same thing. Yo, I'm loving where the barber industry is going. We're getting some amazing people to become a part of it. And I wish you guys the most success. Are the power, power clips ever coming to shavers? So the power clips are an adapter that hook up to your shaver, clipper, or trimmer to allow them to ch um, charge wirelessly. Yes, they are coming. The first ones that they're coming to are the Babeless shavers. So that's it for this session of q and I'm going to continue to do these at the end of most of my videos. If you guys like this idea, let me know in the comments. If you have a question and you hope to have your comments read on my next video, do comment below, man. Ask some questions and uh, love you guys. Appreciate y'all. See you on the next video.